this video I'd like to contrast and compare two inductive study Bibles, both from Harvest House Publishers. The uh, one on the top is from about the year 2000. It's the new inductive study Bible, and the one below is from 1993. It's the International Inductive Study Bible. I'm going to try to remember to call this one the 95 and this one the 77 because this contains the 1977 New American Standard Bible text, whereas this has the 1995 update. In terms of dimensions, this Bible is a smaller one. The newer one is smaller. It's nine and a quarter inches tall, six and a quarter inches wide, and 2.1 inches thick at the spine. Whereas the older 77 edition is a wider book. It's nine, nine and a half inches tall, so half a quarter of an inch uh, taller. It's seven and a half inches wide, so one and a quarter inches wider, and it is 2.2 inches thick, so only a tenth of an inch thicker. They are both in a single column, verse by verse format. References on the inner margin, a wide center column, and then a wide outer margin for note taking. This particular edition, the older edition, the 77 edition, has a column that's 105 millimeters wide, about 72 characters per line, and 49 lines per column. The newer edition, 95, has a narrower column. It is 86 millimeters wide. I count about 64 characters per line, but there are more lines per page, about 51. In terms of page dimensions, the 77 is 234 millimeters tall, that's 9.21 inches tall, 100, 185 millimeters wide, that's 7.28 inches wide. The 95 version has a page that's 227 millimeters tall, that's 8.94 inches tall, 153 millimeters wide, that's 6.02 inches wide. So in terms of page width, we have 6 inches here and about 7.3 inches there. Margins, the newer 95 edition has a top margin of 10 to 15 millimeters, and it's very similar in the old one here. I measured a top margin of 14 to 16 millimeters. The inner margin here in the 77 from that line to the center can be as much as 30 millimeters and here it can be as much as um, 28 millimeters so slightly less inner margin. The 77 has a very wide outer margin. I measure it to be 44 to 46 millimeters. The 95 has a somewhat smaller outer margin. It is only 33 to 35 millimeters. The margin at the bottom in both editions is narrow. In the 95, I measure it to be 11 to 14 millimeters. In the 77, this lower margin is 9 to 12 millimeters, so it's actually a bit smaller here in the older than in the new. In the older 77 edition, the print is dark and somewhat bold. I like it better. Whereas here in the 95 edition, it is somewhat dark, but not especially bold. There is print non-uniformity in both. I characterize it as mild and occasional, and it's difficult to show, but the camera may be able, may allow you to see that the print on the right is a bit darker than the print on the left here in the 77 edition. And this is the variation in the 95 edition. I have page 1607 on the left, 1627 on the right. 
a bit lighter on the left than on the right. So that's not, uh, not very bad at all. Both are perfectly usable. In terms of font size, I measure the capital letters here to be roughly equivalent to an 11.5 point times New Roman font. The lowercase letters also appear to be about 11.5 11 points in the 77 edition. If we look instead at the 95 edition, the font is a bit smaller. Caps are around 10 points and lowercase letters are about 11 points when compared to Times New Roman. The line height here in the 95 is 3.92 millimeters or about 11.1 .1 points. The line height in the older 77 edition is 4.25 millimeters or about 12 points. In both I think the spacing is adequate. I think you can see here that the text is not line matched. This is the 77 edition and clearly the lines on the opposite side of the page do not line up with those on this. And pretty clearly I think you see here that the text in the 95 edition is also not line matched. In the New American Standard Bible, pronouns for deity are in capitals. In both of these editions, the words of Christ are in black ink, and in the New American Standard Bible, you will find translator added words, that is, words that translators add for clarity that do not match anything in the original language, are in an italic font, as here with the word there. There are references in the inner margin, as well as text and translation notes. They are in the 77 edition in about a 7.5 point font and the uh, text and translation notes are tagged back to the verse. So I know that this word collusion is an alternative, tra alternative translation for 5.2 and I look here and I can find that reference. In the 95 edition these text and translation notes and references in the inner margin are smaller, about a half a point smaller, they're about 7.5 points. In neither edition will you find headings in the text or at the top of the page. There are verse numbers at the beginning of each verse, and verses that begin new paragraphs are indicated by a number of the verse in a bold font. So, for instance, this 9 here in Acts 8-9 indicates that a new paragraph begins there. There are chapter numbers in both cases. They're large and bold and span two lines of text. And at the beginning of each chapter, you'll see this chapter number and then the word theme and a blank. That's for you to write in after you've read the chapter and decided upon a theme. There are book titles. Book titles are in the outside top, as are page contents. This is chapter 8. And then the page number is down at the lower right-hand corner of the page. The same format is followed in the newer 95 edition as well. Paper qualities are very similar in the two editions. The sheet thickness in both is about 36 micrometers. I estimate the paper weight to be 33 GSM. Perhaps it's actually 32. They differ somewhat in terms of glossiness. This paper has a patterned waxy structure to the, t to the surface, so you get some glossiness off it. Not sure how much you're seeing there on the camera but it is not particularly distracting. The uh, 95 edition doesn't have quite the same waxiness in terms of the structure. You don't see little patches here and there across the surface, but it does have a, um, a sheen to it. It's just less obvious. It is a lighter cream color than the older edition. This is a deeper cream than that, whether that's due to aging of the paper or whether it was that way originally, I do not know. In both, there is noticeable show through. So you can see 
that uh, symbol printed on the opposite page there and here as well it may be more obvious here but I think that's because it's printed more darkly not because the paper is more opaque each book of the Bible has an introduction we're looking at Romans here in the 77 edition where the font is about 11.5 points you'll see the same thing in the newer edition with the smaller 10 point font the book introductions are broken into sections. There's a general overview here, but very undetailed uh, things to do, and here the things to do are broken up by various chapters. So this is sort of a, a guide to how to go about studying the book, and then they also tell you what they think you should think about before you come to the first chapter in Romans and see the theme. You have this in both editions. If we go to the end of the Book of Romans, you'll see what they call an at-a-glance chart. And one of the things that they tell you you should do is fill out this at-a-glance chart. So here's the at-a-glance chart. Romans, we also have an observation chart. And again, they will have told you how to how they think you should fill that out in the book introduction. As we come to the end of the book of Revelation, we'll see that they give us quite a lot of homework to do here. We have a messages to churches, worksheet, what Revelation teaches about worksheet, seven seals, trumpets, and bowls, Revelation at a glance, what the Bible teaches about Babylon, two pages there, three, four pages on Babylon, the day of the Lord, the day of wrath, the day of God, and it continues and continues until we get to the Bible study help section. Now that begins here in this edition with understanding the value of God's Word. It's the same in the other edition. But here we have our first major difference. Here the next thing we see in the 77 is major events in Israel's history. But if we look at the same here in the 95 edition, after understanding the value of God's Word, we have an inset overview of the Bible, which um, breaks out the different books of the Bible in terms of historical period and whether they're part of the New Testament. And we have a section, Major Events in Israel's History, which is the same again. So I will flip through this Major Events in Israel's History section to let you see that. Little black and white maps, low detailed maps. There's a geneal genealogy for the Hasmonean dynasty, Christ to modern times, and then we actually have the Six Day War and the Yom Kippur War. And following that, we have historical and grammatical helps. This exists in both editions, it's just a larger print here. And there are some minor differences here and there. In terms of what's in these various helps. But here's another major break. The very next thing that you see here in the 77 edition is tables showing the locations of historical charts and topical study charts. In the newer edition, we flip through the major events in Israel's history. And after that, we come to historical and grammatical helps. So we're still on track. Same thing. And the next thing after that is a three-year Bible study plan. We have the Old Testament books in chronological relationship. We have... Um, 
of Harmony of the Gospels. And after the Harmony of the Gospels, things line up again, and we're at the historical charts and topical study charts. But one thing you'll notice is these just say historical charts, whereas this says in alphabetical order. Then the topical study charts and topical study charts in alphabetical order. These are in Bible book order, and these here at this spot in this uh, section of AIDS is in alphabetical order. At this point we come to material that's in the 77 that is not in the 95 at this location at least. At a glance charts and observation charts. We have at, at a glance charts with every book I think so that's probably why they decided not to include it at this point. The very next thing we have here is maps in alphabetical order. And here we have maps. Maps in the 77 edition is followed by illustrations and color maps, whereas in the 95 edition we have illustrations in alphabetical order and color maps in alphabetical order. Following the color maps in the 77 edition, we move immediately to the concordance, which is in four columns. It's about a seven point font. In the 95 edition, we have a number of other things before then. We have the um, maps. Let's see, we've seen all that. So then we have historical charts in Bible book order, topical study charts in Bible book order, the maps in Bible book order. So they've given us many of these assisting uh, materials, tables in both alphabetical and Bible book order, illustrations, color maps, and then you come to the concordance. The concordance in the two editions is about a seven point font in each. It's just printed more darkly in the 77 edition than it is in the 95 edition. At the end of the concordance in the 77 edition there are color maps. There are 11 of these color maps on eight pages on glossy paper, they do not enter the gutter. At the end of the concordance in the 95 edition, we have five blank sheets, ten pages of blank thin Bible paper for study notes. And then we come to the same color maps, just printed a little bit more smaller. smaller and uh, same maps in both editions. Not highly detailed, somewhat colorful. And after that we have a normal hardback paste down construction. Same thing here. Larger maps. We see at this point something we did not see in the other edition. We see stitching in the gutter. I think you should be able to see that. So here's a line of stitching right here, which you do not see in the 95 edition. The 95 edition is glued, the 77 edition is sewn. Both editions do not have ribbon markers. The 77 you see here has yellow and brown head and tail bands. You can also easily see the signatures being pulled together there. Another way of knowing that it's sewn is you can see the layering here. As you open the Bible, you can see the various layers in the paper. The 77 edition is open in Genesis without difficulty. In fact, you have so much material that we'll look at in a minute in the beginning that it does has quite a lot of a gravity assist to hold the left down, but relatively flat. And because of the wide inner margin, the text of the page is flat. So if you have older eyes with magnifying lenses, that's very nice. And even as we go deeper into the Bible, you see that the text is fairly flat out here even though the paper is curling off into the gutter. If we look at the 95 edition, you'll see that it has a dark blue head and tail band. 
These are older copies. I did not buy these new. They're from a used bookstore, so there is writing in them, and they're not in great shape. You'll see things like that flaw at the corner. Here we have a tear in the back cover. This uh, newer edition also, even though it's glued, it does because of that flexible hinge in the hardback. It does lie open in Genesis. The text is still fairly flat and you can make the paper roll off into the gutter but with a little adjustment it's easy to overcome and you can have your text on a relatively, relatively flat part of the page. So I have the 77 edition back on the stand. There's a half leaf. Full title page. Copyright page on the left. This is from Precept Ministries in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Has the 77 edition of the New American Standard printed in 93. This is the third printing printed in the United States of America. And after that, there's a forward, the same copyright page and forward. Well, the details on the copyright page are different. Um, you do have the ISBN information here. And of course, that's going to differ in the 95 edition. The ISBNs should have been printed on the charts you saw at the beginning of the video. But here they are from this um, 95 edition. This is uh, from 2000. It's the first printing. And right after the copyright page is the forward. This is the forward to the New American Standard. So this is the forward to the 77 edition. A dedication page and a welcome. These are essentially the same in both editions. Contents varies a bit. So you see the forward, the welcome, books of the Bible, how to use, spiritual life of Israel, a comparative timetable of history. And here are the books of the Bible. These are both 66 book Protestant Bibles. If we look at the same material here in the 95 edition, we see same breakout essentially, but here we have information on Bible study helps that was not in the other one, concordance and color maps before we get to the books of the Bible, which we did have in the other ones, in the other, the 77 edition. Then we have key charts and illustrations for your use on that page. Bible study helps here. You come next to how to use the International Inductive Study Bible. The approach, observations, a marking approach. This is how to go about doing what they ask you to do for each book. If we look at the same section in the 95 edition, we'll see one major difference, which is that the 95 edition includes this system for marking keywords, including synonyms and pronouns, which you do not see in the 77. If we go forward now to the section on the spiritual life of Israel, we have a comparative timetable of history after some illustrations here. The illustrations appear to be the same in both editions. It's just that they're larger here in the larger format edition from 77. And we come to the timeline. And as far as I can tell, the timelines are essentially the same, except that there is one additional bar in the timeline in the 95 edition. Timeline in the 95 edition, above this blue here, which starts with Adam, has a section on historical books of the Bible with chapter numbers, so you can map the books of the Bible 
into your timeline, which I think would be of assistance. The wide margins make this challenging, but this is an attempt at a font comparison. The 77 is on the right, the 95 is on the left. So we've seen some minor differences in terms of the helps, the content of the material they've added. Um, there are differences in font size, a little bit of a difference in paper, the binding here in the 77 is much better. Uh, but I think the major difference apart from those is the translation. This um, 77 and the 95 differ in a few ways, and I'll outline those. In the interest of time, I'm not going to show my normal charts. Um, they're both relatively literal translations. Neither has a tendency to stray from the Masoretic text here in the Old Testament. And um, they both are fairly loyal in terms of the translations compared to other translations fairly loyal to Westcott and Hort. So apart from that, some of the differences are, um, starting with the introductory con conjunctions that are present in the original languages, but which the 77 retained and the 95 eliminated. So here at 2.1 you see, and by the seventh day, and in the 95, it says, by the seventh day. I think it was eliminated to improve readability. Here's another example of the elimination of the introductory conjunction. Um, also here you see a pronoun, he, which is the way the Greek text reads. It's wrapped up in the verb, I believe, here. But it says, he was praying. It doesn't say Jesus was praying. But the 95 edition, which is somewhat less literal, does include Jesus in the text. Here at least it gives you a note to tell, tell you that it's literally he, not Jesus. And they did delete that introductory and. Long-time viewers uh, remember that my favorite example for showing that the 77 is more literal than the 95 is here in Revelation 13.1. In the 77 it reads, and he stood on the sand of the seashore. If you look at the 95, it says, and the dragon stood on the sand of the seashore. And there's no note there that tells you that the dragon is not in the text. Now generally I prefer the 77 over the 95, but there are a couple of points where the 95 is superior. Here in the end of Luke, there are examples. These are known as Western non-interpolations, or at least they used to be known as that. Here in verse 51, you see a footnote, and it says below, some manuscripts had and was carried up to, into heaven. And then in 52, you see a note that inserts, uh, says some manuscripts insert worshipped him and those inserts find their way into the text in the 95 edition. So you see, go up to heaven, they're in verse 51, and they worshipped him in verse 52. One of the key differences between the 77 and the 95 is that the 77 uses archaic language when addressing God. As you see here in Psalm 22, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, I mentioned these were used, and there is writing in them. Um, this is a note that was placed by the previous owner at the end of the concordance, and I want to show it to you to show you what kind of a show-through you get. I intend to use these Bibles as wide-margin Bibles. I do not intend to use the study method, the inductive study method. And that should give you a sense there for the amount of show through. It is certainly noticeable, uh, but perhaps it's not too bad. That was the 77 edition. This is the 95 here. And you see where I've uh, put my preferred translation there in 2 Thessalonians 1.9. I would prefer it to read, these will pay the penalty of eternal destruction from the presence of the Lord. So that's in a black ink from a 
0 0.5 sigma micron. Let me check. Yeah, 0 0.05 sigma micron. And let's see how badly the show through is. Let's see if I can get that in the camera for you. So right here, my thumb is where it should be. But it's not very bad. Let's give it some back illumination. So to summarize, uh, we have two different editions here. Now if you've seen a more recent edition, I haven't, but if you've seen a more recent edition, please put in the comments how that more recent edition differs from these two older editions. I will say that uh, the biggest negative to me for the 95 edition is the fact that the binding is glued. It uh, is more portable, which is a good thing. Um, I wish the print were darker. Um, I do like the darker print down here, um, and um, the margins are not quite as wide. I do prefer the wider margins. Overall, I really do like the translation here, the 77 translation, better. And for those things I do not like about it, like the Western non-interpolations being omitted, I can always write those in the margin or point to the uh, footnotes that include them in my notes. Um, can't think what else to say. Um, both very good. I think of the two I will end up using this older one because I really do like this print much better. And the paper seems adequate. I will not be using these. I have no use for them at all. And where things other than maps show up in the margin like uh, little keys and hints as to how to go about doing my inductive study. I wish they weren't there because they clutter up the margin that I would like to use for um, notes, but I can ignore them. Oh, here's a little star that someone wrote in the corner. And let's see if we can see how much show through came through there. So the star is here. And it's not especially bad there between the lines. should be just uh, where it reads, and a man of knowledge and for by wise guidance. So in terms of using this for a wide margin, this is the kind of thing that I wish they didn't have here. But in terms of a wide margin Bible, this is good. This is the kind of layout I like. I like having the references in the gutter really would have, I think, preferred a paragraph format here for a single column. Verse by verse works great for two columns, but I think uh, for a single column, a paragraph by paragraph format would have been better. Well, um, can't think of anything else to say. I want to thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, remember to hit the like button, tell your friends about it, share it on social media. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and would like to do so, I certainly encourage you to. And uh, thanks very much for your time.